What's up, Fifth Fam? My name is Sully. I'm sitting here with Derek, and this is Family Matters. This is a podcast where we highlight people in the first form community, not only at HQ, but out there because y'all are the ones doing all the work. So, as I said, this man to my left is Derek White, and he's somebody I personally look up to, and he's a stud. That's why I'm bringing him to you. He happens to be the first, I say it again, the first person on Family Matters. <laughs> and Welcome. Thank Show you. To you. Want to introduce yourself just a little bit? Yeah, sure. First off, thanks for having me, Sully. I yeah, appreciate you it. This is, you know, super cool that I get to be the, the, the first dude, the this, introductory dude. This is going to be a good time. Yeah, for real. So a um, little bit about myself, kind of my background. Uh, I have my bachelor's degree in exercise science from Truman State University, mm -hmm. um, NASM CPT, NASM CNC, like, so certified personal trainer, certified nutrition coach, certified physique and bodybuilding coach. Yep. And I have my ISSA uh, certified personal trainer cert as well. So... Um, yeah, I know, right? No, yeah, it's yeah, getting yeah. hard to catch So you're a professional a, is what you're saying. I'm a professional. Got yeah, it. I've done okay. some coaching courses. I have a background in being, I was a strength coach before I came to work at First Form. Got it. Yep. All that jazz. But before that, um, after I graduated from college, I was a U.S. Army infantry officer. So did a fellow veteran right here. Yeah. But I sat behind a desk, but you know, we're doing the work. I didn't actually go anywhere. I didn't do anything super cool. But, I got you beaten that You know, one. I kind of, I, I like to say that I was like an army LARPer because oh. I just kind of ran around and wore the uniform and trained for a few years. But I still got to do a lot of like really cool stuff. Like hey, the I, paychecks were the first and 15th, right? Yeah, exactly. Yay. Exactly. Got that TRICARE. So it was <laughs> nice. But um, so All my veteran audience, they're going to love this. Yeah, right. Because <laughs> they know what we're talking oh, about. Oh, for sure. Chair Force, Army Infantry. You know, but, they're going to be like, know. man, these guys, they know what they're talking about. But, Here we are. Here we um, are. So when I first joined, like as an infantry officer, I like the, the pipeline is kind of, it's, it's a very like, jam packed year. It's like two years. It's like a year. Years, yeah. Two? Okay. So okay. it's like you, you, sh I literally graduated from college, yeah. showed up at Fort Benning, May, 2020, like during COVID, I was the first COVID class for Ibolic. <laughs> oh no. Graduated. Um, I went to air assault school. While I was in the national guard in college. So I had that under my belt. Um, went to airborne school, went mm. to ranger school, yep. showed up to my first unit. I was a mechanized infantry platoon leader and then I was the mortar platoon leader. So, Damn. yeah. Damn. So I've, uh, got to do some pretty fun stuff. Just, it was pretty much all at Fort Hood and Fort Benning. Ah, well, fun story about Fort Benning. My sister says she will never go back to Georgia for one reason. Why is that? She went to jump school, Fort Benning in August. Oh, dude, mm. that is brutal. She says she'll never do it again. I don't blame her. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, a hot like time. Three weeks of good times. Yeah, 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 yeah. dude. Mosquitoes I, were like pterodactyls, she said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, my worst story from jump school <laughs> Tell me, was, no, I, gotta hear I, this. I, I literally, <laughs> so it was December, yeah. right? And believe it or not, December at Fort Benning gets pretty damn cool especially at night right oh yeah 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 so this is a day it was literally just pouring rain mm. all night long yeah so it's like puddles on the ground all over like the like you know, the grass and stuff yeah. so jump it's my fourth jump the wind is like we're barely tolerable allowed like for us to be able to jump that Are you day gonna blame the air force for this one it was not the air force okay i will blame the fact that i was just horrible at jumping <laughs> Like, dude, I, I feel like I'm a pretty good athlete. Yeah. For some reason, I could not figure out, like, the parachute landing fall very well. Oh, so um, yeah. So they tell you to, like, slip against the wind. So basically, like, you try to slow yourself down by pulling on one side of your parachute. Yep. So if the wind's going that way, you want to pull on this side of your parachute. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah, So yeah. I'm pulling on that side of my parachute. All of a sudden, this huge gust of wind pulls me the other so way. So you got a crosswind. <laughs> yeah, dude. I smacked my head on the ground. Oh, got, no. like, I, I literally went feet head. <laughs> Not feet butt head. Feet head. Well, this explains a lot. Yeah. This is, this is why I, I function the way I you do. You just took one too many hits to the head. Just way, <laughs> way too incoherent half the time. What? But, can't hear you. Yeah, exactly. The, I got a mosquito that lives in my ears, so I can't really hear too well. <laughs> once, but, a, once again, for the veterans out there, it's tinnitus, and we all have it. Yeah, it's um, uh, unfortunate. Yeah, this, uh, sometimes the civilian side don't don't see the, the training no. accidents and stuff like that, so yeah. I think it's really important that like you went through that, but you also got through it. Yeah, for sure, and that's the thing, too. Like I, I had to go to ranger school in like a couple, couple weeks after that, yeah. and I was like, dude, I'm not going to miss this opportunity. Like, yeah. This is going to be one of the coolest things I ever get to do with 100%. the military. So that, that's kind of like where you pick up that, that mindset of, I don't care if I'm you know, minorly concussed mm -hmm. or if like, this is like a minor inconvenience in my life. Yeah. I got to pick up and take this opportunity while I have it. Absolutely. You know? and, and sometimes those opportunities don't present themselves twice. Oh, no, absolutely not. See, that's why I'm bringing this guy on. Okay, he gets it. Mm. And we haven't even gotten to how you discovered First Form yet. No, like, no. Because you were a loyal customer. Yes. All right, yeah. tell me. Tell me, how'd you find out about the brand? 
what drew you to the brand, um, everything like that. Bring it on. So for the people that aren't from St. Louis, we have supplement superstores in St. Louis, right? Yeah. And that's another yep. one of Andy's companies and, you know, the original company, the original company. Yeah. Right. And, um, I remember we like hearing this ad, I was a lifeguard in high school. Right. Mm. And I'm thinking like, dude, I want to be, you know, shredded up for when I go, go into being a lifeguard this summer. Yeah. So I was starting a little cut. And I heard all of these ads for like, you know, the Commander Go Pack and on on okay. the yeah. on the radio. So right? they were targeting you. They were targeting me. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, literally yeah. knew this guy's trying to get gilled up. <laughs> <laughs> was this before or after the army? Like this is ROTC, before this is before. Anything? This is in high school. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. um I'm like, dude, I'm gonna go and check it out and see what they got, right? So I'm I ask about the Commander Go Pack and you know, yeah. I, I picked up that and I picked up the post workout stack. Mm. And oh, best stack out there. Oh yeah, dude. The CTC. Oh. I I was like, dude, there's no way this is gonna be as good as they I'm saying a it is. fruit guy myself, oh my but God. I'll give you CTC dude. because you're a different person. I was uh, just no. I'm I'm gonna get off topic. Here uh, go for ahead. A second, so let's go. Let's go. Talk about the, talk about CTC. I was a loyal CTC guy for probably eight <laughs> years. Literally from that moment. <laughs> eight years. Yeah, that moment. Now I I would like sample around. Like I'd have the chocolate <laughs> milkshake, which is also delicious. <laughs> just gonna dabble have, here. And yeah, exactly. Just to mix things up. But dude, CTC is my go-to until we dropped the cafe mocha oh that is heat i mean that was recent too yes like, what last month this last no, yeah last, like literally a couple weeks ago yeah, yeah yeah you were a ctc guy the entire whole time. time whole time loyal dude right loyal dude it's hard for me to i was like dude i can't can't miss out on the a good believe. ctc so opportunity it, after every workout since high school ctc and ignition pretty much as pretty much, much as possible yeah as much as possible you know i mean i'll give you it i give you credit yeah. you know yeah. Apparently you're, you know, you're a creature of habit. I, dude, it's good stuff. You find I love you, cinnamon toast crunch. Okay, that explains you know? it. I so, mean, you just find what you like and you take off. Exactly. Right? All right. Yeah, so but, sorry. Back to the back yeah, to the story. Yeah. Sorry. So S two. That's how I found it. Literally, just met some great people at S two that yep. really just seemed to care about me. Mm. Got like, you know, had felt like they just kind of rolled the red carpet out for me, and then from then I was like, okay, I got to go back. Yep. Just kept learning and trying to learn new things, and um, you know, I felt like they were really trying to make sure that my results were great. Yeah. So. Stayed loyal to the brand um, as much as I could. And then I got to a point where after Ranger School, I got an e like a random email and it was like, hey, first form athlete search. Hey. And I was like, dude, I'll, th I'll throw my name in the hat. Like I, at this point, I was, not, I was <laughs> not super big on social media just yet. Right. Yeah, understandable. Um, and like, I'm still working on that part of my life of trying to be able to showcase my life a little bit better. But um, at that time, I was yeah. like, dude, I'll just put my name out there. Why not? And got a phone call about the Legionnaire program. Yeah. And that's how I got, like, if you, if you aren't familiar with the Legionnaire program, just kind of sending some people out into the community that are, you know, customers of First Form, rep the brand. Mm -hmm. And it's a really awesome opportunity. That's how I get my foot in the door with just coaching in general. Yeah. So it allowed me so many opportunities to learn so much more about, you know, nutrition, fitness, lifestyle, all of that good stuff. And I did that for about two years while I was in the army. And Wow, well, yeah. you're still in it. Still am. Pulling double yeah, duty. Exactly. Maybe triple duty. You know, a little bit. But, yeah. uh, and, you know, I just wanted to pour as much into it as I possibly could because I, I felt like I was genuinely helping people. And I loved that. And I had people that were helping me help more people. Yeah. And I thought to myself, you know, I, the concept of like the ripple effect. Yep. You know, when you throw like a pebble in the pond it's and it has a ripple, and you throw a big boulder in the pond, it's going to have a giant ripple. Yeah. And I thought, dude, so I got to. So you wanted to be a big boulder. I wanted to be a big boulder. Big boulder. Right? And you are a big boulder. Well, thank you. you know, I'm working on it. But uh, I thought to myself, you know, what's the best way I can make the biggest impact I possibly can? Okay. And wanted to try to make more like Derek's. Have you, you know, have you, sorry to interject, but have you always had that mindset? Or when did that, that the switch ripple effect? flip? Or wanting to be the best Derek. You know, I think that's really important for everybody because a lot of people just kind of yeah. go around the world, just like, especially with social media nowadays, mm. they're like, I'm going to be like that guy. I'm going to be like that yeah. guy and like trying to copy somebody else, but not realizing mm. that the potential is within them. Yeah. When did that click for you? I don't think it was a specific moment. Okay. I think it was something that was gradual over time. Yeah. Of realizing like, dude, I can't compare myself to this dude. Mm. Like this dude is an outstanding runner. Like yeah. he can run a 20, 28 minute, five mile. Like he's a beast. Yeah. I can't do that, at least not at the current moment. But what I can do is like, you know, bench 405 or mm -hmm. like squat a lot of weight or whatever. And yeah. that he can't do that. So it's like, but that's not, that's not that there's a knock on him. It's just, I have my strengths and yep. I want to play to them the best I possibly can. Yep. And I remember I took a leadership class in high school and 
uh, one concept that really stuck with me was like working on your strengths mm. just as much as you're working on your weaknesses. Okay. Because like, yeah, you can make your weaknesses try to catch up a little bit, but if you can make your strengths so strong, yeah. you can be such a, an asset to wherever you are yep. with that strength. Yep. And um, to me, that was like the, what are the things that I'm really good at? Mm -hmm. What are the things I'm really interested in? Cause I, like, you know, if, if it's something that I'm not super passionate about, like. Yeah. It's hard to keep motivation up for that. Motivation exactly. doesn't last. Yeah, right? exactly, exactly. So, and I think with fitness though, there's yeah. so many more facets to it that you can find what you are passionate Dude, about. I talk about that all the time, Yeah, all the time. I like to do CrossFit mm -hmm. functional style training, yeah. right? You like to do a little bit more on the bodybuilding side. Yeah, Here's exactly. the thing. We have both run a marathon within the last year, mm. okay? He might've been a little bit slower. Actually, yeah. you were faster than me because oh, wow. I got some massive blisters. They were my entire feet. No excuse, I wore old shoes. That's my bad. Yeah, sure. But that doesn't mean like we had two different styles of training. Yeah. We enjoy different things outside of the gym, mm -hmm. but it's all under the umbrella of fitness. Of fitness, yeah, exactly. Right? And, and I think finding the niche, your mm -hmm. niche, things that you like and do them more is really, really important that a lot of people miss yeah absolutely like not everybody has to be the bodybuilder not everyone has to be the marathon runner not everyone has to be you know functional fitness guy no. what's important is finding what you enjoy doing yep and what you can be consistent with to have a healthy lifestyle that's i touch on consistency touch on consistency please so like I, for me personally, it's hard to be perfect all of the time. Yeah. I just, you know, it's, it is a huge challenge, especially when life happens. Well, perfect is impossible. Perfect is impossible. But what you can do is be consistent with just little things. Yeah. Like I can hit my protein goal every day and that's not a problem for me. Yeah. You know, I can get 45 minutes of movement in, you know, five to seven days out of the week. Yep. That's not a problem for mm -hmm. me. Just being able to make those small adjustments to my schedule, what I'm eating, what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And if I can do, if I can be perfect 80 to 90% of the time, yep. that is what real consistency is. And that's what like the real discipline is. Cause like, otherwise I, I'm a big, I, I'm a love the, the idea of, you know, you can't sprint all the time, mm -hmm. but it's important to sprint sometimes. Yeah. You know, because if yeah. you sprint all the time, you're I've like, actually never heard it put like that. So is that something you use during coaching? A little bit, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because tell, tell me more. So we we just did this eight week challenge. Got it. Right. Yes. And for me, I was noticing that I was I wouldn't say I was getting complacent, mm. but it was one of those times when a lot of life was happening. Yeah. And, and you did go through a lot of life. It was a lot of life really fast. A couple of moves within a couple of months. Yeah, exactly. Um, getting out of the military. Getting out of the military. Which is a big thing for any veteran or anybody mm -hmm. that, that gets out of the military. Like yeah. it, like people don't understand how big and abrupt of life change that is. Yeah. So Going from that, a couple of moves, mm -hmm. ended back at first form. Back at first form. Yep. And you I needed something to help you be consistent. Exactly. Exactly. So I was like, dude, I, I needed to just sprint for eight weeks. Like, I yep. can't sprint for 52 weeks. Yep. But I can sprint for eight weeks and then try to at least start gradually building up from there to where I want to be. Yep. Right. So yep. taking that short burst, you know, I got to where I wanted to be mm -hmm. really did better than I thought I was going to do. Yeah, you did fantastic. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And now I can work on that next big thing mm -hmm. and I don't have to sprint to get there. I'm, I'm at a good spot. I'm at a good starting space. Yeah. And now just by being consistent with those little things, yep. having those daily disciplines to just hit those, those little mile markers, yeah. I can go pretty far. Well, you know? I think this is another big key. So like you say that you're in a good spot, right? Mm -hmm. Now, especially because it's December, it's December 1st is when this is coming out. Yes. Right? Yeah. This is the time where people get complacent. Oh, absolutely. So now you, you hit the gas, you're here, you're here, you're here, mm. right? What do you do next? So I actually just made an Instagram post about this today about, you know, I'm starting my next goal mm. today. Today is day one of my next goal. Winning. And exactly, because why would I wait until January 1st? I can put myself 31 days ahead. Yeah of that goal if I start today. Plus, it's really easy to go back into those old bad habits. You said you it were is. complacent. Yes, absolutely. Right? At least at least dabbling in a lot of yeah. complacency with my diet. So you're not going to be sprinting, right? No. But all those habits that you accumulated over these last eight mm -hmm. weeks, they don't go anywhere no. unless you let them. Yes. And that's why you're starting today. Yes. Got it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because it's so easy in December with the holidays coming around. Oh, yeah. Families in town. You know, I, I leftovers. Yes, I exactly. Them. Like, you saw me on Thanksgiving, like, I'm a pumpkin pie fiend. 
Like, dude, I love. <laughs> he had half a pie. Dude, oh my gosh, I am. I have such a sweet tooth. Me too. So it's so easy. My mom likes to put out like little M and M's and stuff like. That. It's so easy. Just but grab not and perfection. Go. It's not perfect. No, I don't need to be perfect all the time. But that's good. I, exactly. Because you, you don't need to be perfect. And no. that's a lesson that I think everybody needs to learn. Mm -hmm. Is that perfection, it, it's impossible. Yeah. However, 80 to 90% of the time, even in an eight week challenge, mm -hmm. you win. Yeah, absolutely. I, I was not perfect during this challenge. Yeah. By any means. Yeah. There was a lot of, not a lot, but I mean, I, I probably was, you know, had at least 10% of the time messing up. Yep. You know what I mean? And I, I would say that I have a fairly good knowledge on, you know, being disciplined, you know, nutrition, yep. training, lifestyle, all that jazz. Yeah. But it's like, even for me, there's still challenges to I, that. I think that's everybody. Yeah, exactly. So and that just doesn't just go away. When, when a challenge arises, you fell off the wagon. Mm -hmm. What do you do? I would say- You personally. I try to acknowledge that it happened. Oh. Right? So I take that accountability piece of like, okay, I just had- you know, a sleeve of Oreos. Not that that's happened, but I mean, it has happened. But not man, much. I I've sent pictures to where I I've done a line. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, an entire exactly. line. Just rip it open, and, <laughs> dude. Oh my. So like, yeah. For me, taking that accountability of like, okay, I let it happen, and I remember there actually was a moment. So I had a couple people in my accountability group, and we'd send each other our macros at the end of the day. Every yeah. Day, right. And I had a day when I was like, dude, I went like. 500 calories over today. Yeah. It was, it was the day I did Chad. Got it. Right? <laughs> yeah. And sent it to my accountability group. And um, someone was like, Derek, what happened? I was like, dude, I my sweet tooth got the best of me today. Yep. I'm sorry. I will not let this happen again tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So taking that accountability for myself, acknowledging that it happened. Yep. And realizing like, okay, tomorrow is a new day. Mm -hmm. Not even tomorrow. That that moment right there yeah. is a new moment. You to wipe start. the board it's clean. Done. It's done. You don't done. have to wait till midnight. Nope. You don't have to wait till you wake up. No, I'm not going to keep eating Oreos and it, be now 2,000 calories in the hole. Yeah, because it's you know? easy to do that. It's so I'll easy. I'll start Monday. And I've done that. Yep. I've done that before. But More times than I want to admit. I, I think the thing that really helps me is not beating myself up at, of those moments. Mm. And then immediately starting again, not overcorrecting. Yeah. Just going back on my plan. You wipe the drive. What done. Done. Gone. Restart. Yeah. Good. Hit the but reset button. I think the most important part is to start again. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, like and having that accountability piece because mm -hmm. somebody put pressure on you, yeah. which is good pressure. Absolutely. And they care about you. Mm-hmm. And then you were able to take responsibility, which is so important. Jocko yep. talks about that all the time. Yep. And then boom. You're, you're reset. Yeah. Like the drive is clean. It's time to go forward. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Cool. So let's talk about what is next. Okay. Hit me. You said you made a post about it, but let's tell the people. So for now, my next goal, I so I just finished this kind of like little cut, mini cut. Mini cut. Yeah. I would say. Eight weeks. Eight weeks. Foot on Eight weeks sprint. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so now I'm going to go into, I'm going to call it my massing phase. Because I don't want to say bulk, because I feel like if I say I'm going to bulk, I'm going to go. It's a dangerous term. It's a dangerous term. So I'm yeah. trying to put on a little bit more muscle mass, and specifically my chest, my shoulders, and my arms. Yeah. Because my legs are a really strong point. My back is a really big strong point. So yeah. I'm splitting it up. I'm going to get a little science in here. So That's fine. I'm a, Hit it. I'm a huge geek with strength no and conditioning. I'm going to do a couple different mesocycles. So I'm going to do two six-week mesocycles. Yep. Where the first one will be focusing on my chest and then some arm development. Got it. And the next one will be primarily focusing on my shoulders and then also some arm development. Got it. So um, doing that for about 12 weeks, kind of reassessing where I am mm -hmm. and making the decision of what I need to do from there. But I'm, you know, right now... I've been eating, you know, in a in a pretty steep deficit. I lost about 13 pounds in Dang. that eight weeks like span. So, yep. uh, to make sure that I'm not just you know pushing the limits and going up and doing super like high caloric intake, I'm yep. doing what's called a reverse diet. Got so it. Tell I, me more. What I'm doing is I'm at gradually adding calories back in mm -hmm. to my diet. So, it mostly just like the, you gradually cut. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And, and why is that? So a lot of times when we start to do a diet yep. uh, and we, we prolong it over time, yep. our metabolism isn't running as fast as it was when we we're eating more food. Our body kind of adjusts a little bit. Yeah. It goes to main temperature. Let's yeah. Call it. Yeah. Like room so temperature. Let's call it. Your body wants to maintain homeostasis. Yes. Right? It wants to stay the same as much as it possibly can. Mm -hmm. So it's going to try to adapt to like what you're doing. Yeah. So if you aren't feeding your body a lot, eventually it's going to be like, okay, we'll slow down some other processes to try to make sure that we're, you know, functioning and not losing too much. Mm -hmm. um, 
So by gradually adding calories back in, I'm gonna make sure I'm not putting on a lot of body fat. Yeah. I'm just going to be gradually kind of like waking up my metabolism. Yeah, because those everything all those systems have to get turned back on. Exactly. So it's you're going to slowly kind of stoke the fire yes. at first, not yeah. throw logs on it and yeah. just like watch it fizzle out. Exactly. Yeah, cuz yeah. I I could do that approach. You could. I could just start eating like 4000 calories every day. I mean, but then we can go into the difference between fat gain and muscle mm. gain and why it's important to go slower so that yeah. you gain more muscle. Exactly. And, and we can go through that at a different time. But yeah. basically- Oh, that, I can ne- nerd out about yeah, that. Yeah, I have nerd no doubt. I have no that. doubt. But that's what you're doing. So over yeah. the next 12 weeks, mm-hmm. you're going into a muscle building phase yes. of your pr- training. Yes. What'd you call it again? Uh, my massing phase. Massing phase. Massing, massing phase. Massing phase, new term. What do you know, huh? Yeah, there you go. Um, and Use with that for that, your friends. And he doesn't know I'm gonna do this, so I'm gonna surprise him. You guys are gonna be able to follow along. Yeah, Man. putting a little pressure because at the end of his post, he was just like, ah, I might put this on Train Heroic. I did. Or another fitness app. I did. So this right here today is All right. <laughs> putting pressure on him because I'm a good friend. Yep. Okay. And I'm putting just a little bit yep. to put that out for the people if they okay. want to follow along. Yeah. And follow the training plan that you mm-hmm. are, which, you know, could work for them. It depends because yep. it's not one-on-one training. So everybody, you might not get the same results because it's not one-on-one mm-hmm. training. If you want specific results, get yourself an advisor. First form app, I tell you what, we will take care of you. But shameless plug, not an ad. <laughs> but no, so you're going to put that mm-hmm. out. Okay. Yep. And so let, let's just talk about like, what's your split going to look like? That means what his workout looks mm-hmm. like on a daily basis. So the way I'm kind of thinking of, about it is I'm, I'm big on... You know, certain things can, like prioritizing certain muscle groups more, yep. hitting them more frequently. Mm-hmm. And it, like for my legs, I don't need to hit my legs nearly as much, yeah. right? Because my legs are a strong point. Yep. So I'm gonna dial back my volume of my legs. I'm gonna have one real leg day. Mm-hmm. I still like to be able to move athletically. So I have, you know, my back day is gonna become a, a posterior chain day. Yeah. So I'm gonna be incorporating a lot more like deadlifts, a lot more, you know, uh, athletic kind of functional movements for my posterior chain. Yep. Just that way, because my back is another strong point. So mm-hmm. the way I'm thinking about structuring this is day one of the week, which will probably be a Monday or Sunday, will be chest and then some arms okay. because it's still trying to grow my arms a little yeah. bit. But I want the reason why that's the first day is I'm trying to grow my chest. It's not because it's International Chest Day. It's not because it's International Chest okay. Day. It's because it's part of it though. When but like what, it is part of it. But when you come off of a rest day, that is when your body is most primed yep. to be able to you know push a lot of weight, create a lot of what's called mechanical tension. Yep. Which is ultimately what's going to drive growth in that muscle tissue. Got right. It. So if I can p- load my chest up with as much weight as I possibly can. Mm-hmm. Safely, safely. Then I'm going to see a lot more like growth, a lot more hypertrophy. Got so it. I'm putting that first. The next day I'm going to do probably a leg, my leg day. Yep. For a couple reasons, I love hitting legs. That's my favorite day of the week, honestly. That's how you build oak trees? That's how you build oak trees? I'm hiding them in my pants right now, but um, hitting legs that next day, probably taking a rest day. Got it. Going into what will be like literally just a straight chest day. Got it. Right. Yep. Just, just trying to grow my but chest. But you're still working your accessory movers as well. Yeah, exactly. You're still working your but, triceps, your shoulders. Yeah. But you are straight chest focus, no arms out. Exactly. Got yeah. It. It's going to be as much uh, chest volume as I can fit in that I can still recover from. Yeah. And feel good and probably, you know, because the big thing is, I think this is where a lot of people mess up, mm-hmm. is they think, oh, I need to do 20 sets of chest. No. Yeah. And, and maybe I, a week. Maybe, maybe in a week. Yeah. You know, and for me, like, that's honestly too much too. Yep. Uh, if I can put in, you know, between 10 and 15 high quality working sets mm-hmm. for a muscle group, yep. that's for me, like the ideal range to grow. Yeah. And I can see a lot of, a lot of benefit out of that. Yep. Right. So I'm going to hit that chest day, um, go into, oh, I forgot about this too. I'm going to do some shoulders before I hit legs mm-hmm. on Tuesday. Yep. Right. And the big reason for that is I'm also trying to grow my shoulders. So if yep. I can hit that accessory, Frequency some accessory and volume. yes. And if I can do that before I start my leg day, your shoulders are such a small muscle group yep. that they, they grow pretty easily, but then they also don't require a lot of like central nervous system activation yep. to kind of like signal and be like, Hey, I'm going to be super tired after I do a bunch of lateral raises. So if I go into then hitting legs, I'll be fine. Then I'm, so after that second chest day, now I'm on Thursday, right? So it's that posterior chain day. Oh, uh, you're on fr- So you said chest, chest, chest and, and arms, arms, legs, legs uh, and shoulders, legs and shoulders, off day, 
Thursday, chest, chest day, Friday. Yes, Friday, that posterior chain day. Yep. And then Saturday is going to be like just kind of my fluff and buff shoulders, arms, which will be fun. Dude, those are the funnest days. Those are such a and fun And then day. Sunday, we got another rest day. Sunday's another rest day. Yep. So, and this is to maximize muscle growth. Maximizing muscle growth. Yep. I don't really enjoy, uh, not that I don't enjoy, I love training. If I could train every day, I would. Yep. But I, those t- two rest days are so critical. Yep. For your actual growth. And like still getting moving in. Like I'll still go for walks. I might like casually bike or a little, you know, on the, the seated bike or whatever. Yeah. Maybe get on the Stairmaster, just that zone two range. Ooh, but yeah. outside of that, you know, I want to make sure that I'm, your, your body grows yeah. when you're resting. It does, 100%. You know? And that's like, so a lot of people don't realize this, mm-hmm. right? Um, when you're done working out, yeah. you talked about hypertrophy, you talked about reps and sets, you talked about all that stuff, and mm-hmm. that's how you grow. Yes. In reality, though, mm. it's what you do after your workout exactly. that means the most. Yeah. How are you recovering? We always go with the post-workout step. Yeah. yeah. Right? So we have our Formula One and we have our ignition mm-hmm. because we want to get that um, rapid assimilation protein. Yep. Then we want to get that high glycemic carbohydrate yeah. right into our bloodstream so yeah. that we can start repairing those muscles as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Right? That's what we do. Yeah. Um, I highly suggest that that's what you do because Absolutely. when you work out, what do you do? So you're doing two things when you're working out. You're, you're breaking down muscle tissue. Yep. And then you're depleting your body's stored glycogen, your stored energy that's in that muscle tissue. Yeah. Right? So the two things we really want to make sure we're focusing on is one, giving our body the building blocks it needs to repair, which is that protein. Yep. But then we also really need to try to like actually replace that glycogen. It's kind of like, let's say you have a car, right? I'm, I'm trying to drive from St. Louis down to, I don't know, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, right? That's yeah, a I've long drive. You know, yeah, like, yeah. but it'd be kind of fun. I don't I know. Think so. Just brains first city. All right, we're going. Ahead. We're going right. I can. I if my if my you know body my muscles are yep. the car, I can't go anywhere if I don't have any fuel in the engine. True. Right. So think of like the 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 glycogen. Yep. As that gasoline, mm. I need to replenish it. Otherwise, I can't. I, you know, I, I can't make a lot of repairs to my car and go anywhere. Yeah. Without that, so. Spike, you know, having an insulin spike, insulin's an anabolic hormone, blunts mm-hmm. cortisol, does all this great stuff to try to help us with actually building muscle tissue. Yeah. That's one of the big benefits of taking ignition, taking a, a high glycemic carbohydrate. Mm-hmm. Then on top of that, we're replacing that, that stored glycogen. It allows that protein to really start doing its job a lot faster. Got it. Having that, and then, so having that rapid assimilation whey protein on top of it. Yeah. Start rebuilding like that muscle tissue. Yeah. Dude, I, when I started doing that, because I, t- I told you I started doing that in like 2015, yep. feel so much less sore, so much better recovered than the next day. And life is a lot better when you don't feel overly sore every oh, day. Oh, absolutely. And when you can push it a little bit harder in the gym, yeah. see results that much faster. And, and I think that's the key is people think that killing yourselves in the gym is the key to getting bigger muscles. And yeah. it's, not the, it's not true. No. It's the no. recovery process. And it, that's mm-hmm. why you're actually going to be following a split yeah. because it allows you to recover exactly. throughout the week and yeah. you can maximize the muscle growth specifically in your arms and your shoulders yes. and your chest. Yes, for sure. But Perfect. outside of that, the big, like I, I'm going to be eating about one gram protein a little bit above my goal body weight. Okay. So I'm trying to probably end of my massing phase. I'll probably want to be about like 225. Yep. So I'm going to probably be eating closer to like 250 grams of protein in a day for a few reasons. For, for one, I, I enjoy a lot of high protein foods. Yep. Uh, I enjoy the benefits of a lot of like of eating high protein diet. It'll keep you fuller. Keep me feeling full. Yeah. Helps me with my recovery a lot. Protein, you know, has a very high thermic effect. That's why when people say like, oh, I got the meat sweats. <laughs> really, it's your body. It's trying to break it down. It's trying to break it down. It, yeah. it really increases your metabolism a decent amount. Yep. You know, to to turn up that furnace exactly, and that's why people are like, you know, when they eat a bunch of burgers at the barbecue, or you go to a Brazilian steakhouse, oh, dude, Brazilian you steakhouse, you are sweating, are and that that's the big reason why. Yeah. So you know, there's so many benefits to a high protein diet that yeah. I really enjoy reaping the benefits of. So I found that in a high protein diet, specifically when I'm trying to gain weight, mm-hmm. right, trying to get good weight, not bad yeah. weight. Yeah. It helps me because it is the most satiating macronutrients, mm-hmm. which is proteins, fats, and carbs. Yep. Um. It helps me stay away from those high carbohydrate, high fat, yeah. high sugar yeah. foods specifically because sure. I'm full. Yeah. I don't like, I look at them and I'm like, man, I know that would taste good. Yeah. But like, just because I'm full, I don't want a dirty bulk. I know mm. it. Yeah. I'm going to go more towards those protein meals, yes. those high protein, all natural mm. meals. Right. Like, that's just me personally. Oh, no, absolutely. And on top of that, you know, it's, it's very easy to spill over on things like, 
carbs and fats. Yeah. It's so hard to spill over on things like protein and see a, a negative effect. Yep. Like it, you would have to eat, like for me, it would be well over 300 grams to really see it. It's a lot of protein. It's a lot of protein. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you know, cool. to me, yeah. having as much protein as I possibly can, focusing on my sleep, th those are the big, getting my micronutrients in. Yep. Those are really the big things that are gonna really push my success mm -hmm. with this massing phase. Hell yeah, I so. love it. So, y'all, we're coming to the end here, right? First, we have a couple of things to go back over. We are gonna go back over kind of what made you successful. Okay. Right? Yeah. So, sure. let's see if I got it. Okay. So, number one, S2, finding a community of people oh. that you can go towards yeah. and be with that push you further, put mm -hmm. pressure on you, but are also just good people all yeah. around. Yeah. Right. Well, in, I, I've had a lot of times right now is a time where I'm surrounded by great people. Yeah. I've had a lot of times before I worked here, mm -hmm. I was not surrounded by great people a lot of times, mm -hmm. you know, and, mm -hmm. and maybe I had some good people in my life. Yeah. But the community that the, the big community around me was mm -hmm. not necessarily the, the most, you know, growth environment yeah. that I could have been in. And that's, you know, when you, when you experience such a great community and then you go to something that's maybe a little bit more negative, mm -hmm. you really see the importance of having that, that solid base around you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And I, I was fortunate that I at least had, you know, first form still here, yeah. like still with me. It was yeah. just, you know, maybe not in a different capacity. Exactly. Yeah. So, and, and even when you were off at Ranger school, even when you were doing all that mm -hmm. stuff, you were still part of the community. You were still yes. part of the family. Yeah. Right. And, and I think that's really, really important. Mm -hmm. um, um, number two, uh, you don't have to be on the gas all the time. No. Right? So like, mm. yeah, 10% of the time you have to hammer down. But the other 90% of the time, while you're staying consistent, you're mm. surrounded by good people, that is actually how you truly get ahead. Yeah, yeah. That, that you know, re redundancy of just yep. constantly just building up on, you know, just those little things. It doesn't yeah. have to be like massive changes, but- the, um, the little things are how big things happen. Exactly, like, yeah, one brick at a time. Exactly, yes, exactly, love mm -hmm. it. Number three, um, I had it in my mind and now I forgot it, but oh, I'm here sorry. it is. <laughs> there it is, it came back, don't there worry. There we go. All right, starting your next goal right away. Not giving yourself mm. till Monday is what I always say. Yeah. We're on a Friday. We're here. Yep. December 1st, and we're starting our goal. We aren't going to mm. wait until the first of the year, which happens to be a Monday. We aren't going to wait. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important to start your next goal. Yeah, absolutely. Right? So coming off of a challenge, now we're going to gain a little bit of muscle mass. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Time to get jacked. Did I get that one right? For sure. Beautiful. And number four, just wrapping up, having... This is something that we didn't touch on. Okay. But this is something that I was picking up. Okay. Having core values in your life that kind of keep, that act as guardrails. Yeah. To like, oh, I'm not going to go over there. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm going to stay in this lane because yeah. these are what truly I live my life by. Yeah. What do you think about that? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And there have been... I mean, I've, I've had jobs where I was like, dude, I can't stay here purely because it goes against my values to be here. Got it. Like just the way that you run, you're running things or whatever, or yeah, not just absolutely. jobs, communities, whatever it may be. Yeah. And it's, it just, it just naturally goes against who I am. Yeah. And I just, I, I don't want to be someone who I'm not. Mm -hmm. I want to be somebody who's positive, outgoing, you know, can help people. Yep. Make a big positive impact in the world. Yep. And I can't do that if I'm doing things that are, in my opinion, wrong. Yeah, you know, yeah, that go against who mm -hmm. you think you are. It'll exactly. eat at you. Exactly. And even if it's not those big, like, oh, there's something that's morally wrong, if it's just something that you know is not ideal for you in your situation, maybe you're yep. doing something that isn't, you know, the best role model example for your kids or your, your, your spouse or whatever, your friends. Yeah. Then you can notice those things really quickly. And, you know, be, having those core values set in place and kind of realizing, yep. like, what is driving me and what do I really value? Yeah helps keep you on track with who you want to be. Perfect. And, and let's just drive this point home. Mm. Those little things that make you successful, Yep. that actually has an opposite as well. Oh. If those are eating, those little things are eating at your core values, at who you are as a human, at your training program, those add up too. Yeah. And they, and they can be the direct opposite. Mm. And that's where people get into bad habits, For right? Sure. And they, they slip because maybe their values aren't in line. Maybe mm -hmm. what they're doing isn't in line with who they want to be. Yeah. Right. So looking in the mirror and just being able to be like, oh, 
that's outside of my core values and self audit I think is mm-hmm. really important and it sounds like you have that down pat I, I pretend to you know well, I try I try my best well you know what I say when you say we try yeah yeah Yoda baby do or do not there is no try yeah Absolutely. so um, now that we have that wrapped up I hope I hit it you know, yeah those those, for, those four points um, let's go over this is called Family Matters. So let's go over a little bit of Family Matters. It helps that you're at HQ. Yep. You love it. just finished the Fall Transformation Challenge. Did, yes. Right? And when's the deadline for that? Uh, so the deadline is 11.59 the p.m. Central Standard Time this Sunday, December, December 3rd. 3rd. Yeah. So if you have been in the challenge and you were like, hey, I, I want to make sure I get my final progress photos in, yep. make sure you get them in before then. Got it. And that's to be eligible to win whatever prize Mm -hmm. that um, might be out there for you. Also, along with that, we have also had a lifestyle challenge going on at HQ for the community all year long, right? And those pictures are also due at 11.59 Central Standard Time, p.m. Central Standard Time on December 3rd. This, even though it's a lifestyle 2023 challenge, It does not go all the way through the end of the year. Mm. Okay, y'all? I implore you, get those pictures in for the eight-week fall transformation challenge and for the 2023 First Form Lifestyle Challenge. Next thing on our list that we're covering is an open gym. Oh, dude. I'm stoked about the open gym. Dude, I love open gyms. I love We talk about community. They're my favorite time. Oh, yeah. My mom actually just registered to go. Did she really? Yeah, so she's excited to come back and meet a lot of people and see all of her friends that she's made over time. I'm just happy. I'm just happy. I love the open gyms. Me too. But yeah, so December 8th, 2023 from 4 to 7 p.m. PM. Yeah, so that'll be here at HQ. Yep. You do have to register online if you do want to come. And I'm going to throw that. If you're viewing this on YouTube, I'm going to throw that link. Uh, in the description below and you can also find it on the first forms outdoor page you can find Mm -hmm. it on the first form main page Um, normally in the stories i'll I'll also throw up a graphic just for you Um, so if there is slots left there's only 200 of those yeah if there is slots left you can come join us on the eighth and normally we do a big group workout or you can just chill and enjoy a workout Mm. in the gym and get some awesome pictures taken of you Oh yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's great, and you see, there are people that come from all over the place. All over like, the place, you know, it's insane. See, you'll see people from like you know, not just right outside of the state, like in Illinois or Iowa. Yeah, like there are people like from California. Yeah, from there's people Hawaii. that fly in for this thing. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It, it's awesome. All right, now the third thing that we're going to cover um, for the family matters portion is the November Knockdown Challenge. Tell me about this. You've been doing it. Yes. Tell me more. So last, this is the last week of the November Knockdown Challenge. So I'm not, so I've never shot a bow before, like a bow and arrow. I'm Doesn't not matter, an archer, right? right? Doesn't matter. Um, I wanted to try to make sure that I could at least, you know, take part in the challenge. And stepping outside your comfort zone. Stepping outside my comfort zone, take on, taking on something new. So yep. I literally borrowed my stepdad's bow and was like, hey, we'll give this a shot. But it's it's essentially a series of fitness challenges. Yep. And during, you know, while you're doing the fitness ch- challenge component, you're also trying to hit targets with your bow and arrow. And I'm like, you know what? The, the difference between this and you know, shooting a rifle can't be that different. You know what I mean? <laughs> it is. It is very different. But at least the fundamentals are similar with like sight picture, you know, making sure your breathing's good, all that jazz. So yep. that hasn't been yep. horrible, but I am not. Not so good at shooting bow, like a bow and arrow. But if you guys are doing the challenge, uh, making sure that you submit your final video, your final photo of your target um, yeah. by 11.59 p.m. this upcoming Sunday, December 3rd as well, ah. as the last day that you can submit for week four. But and, and if you haven't, if you happen to see this video and you haven't been doing it, you can still go do the workout. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Like it, it's not something that, I mean, in order to qualify for the end goal, you mm-hmm. had to have done all the weeks, but it's yeah. not something that you have to do. You can still just become part of the community. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we've talked the importance of community. For sure. And there's like, you know, we have the First Form Outdoors like Facebook page. Yep. We have the Instagram page. And it's really cool. Like, we they have do the giveaways group. too on their stories. Lots all of the giveaways. Time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And um, it's cool. Like also in the messenger group too. Yep. Seeing people get together and actually be like, hey, is anyone not like in Iowa that's going bow hunting this weekend or whatever? It's it's pretty awesome. Creating that community of good yeah, people. I love it. Right. Ah, awesome. Cool. Well, that's what matters in the family. And I really appreciate you. And Derek, I appreciate you. Yeah, man, thanks for having the me. First appreciate person. it. Oh, one last thing. One last thing. So this feed 
is Family Matters. This is going to highlight people within the First Form community, not only at HQ, but also around in the world. Derek and I have been kind of throwing things around in our head and wondering if oh, we yeah. should start our own, very own podcast as well with just us two blockheads over here. Oh, yeah. Little For meathead that, podcast. Little meathead podcast, little meathead, 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 meathead mentality, podcast. blockheads mentality. I don't know. Y'all, do you want to see that? I need you to give us feedback, oh, right? Yeah. We barely started nerding out. We like to nerd out. Oh, yeah. We can get pretty, <laughs> we can get pretty scientific. We can get like, but oh, like we're pretty good at breaking it down as simple as yeah. we possibly can, yeah. too. So, so like, like, do you want to see more of that? You got to let us know. And if you do, make sure you put a name down in the comments so that we can start out crowdsourcing. A few oh, yeah. Here. Yeah. We got to get something good going here. Oh. Something that flows off the tongue. <laughs> yeah. Just, just yeah. You know, <laughs> flows off the tongue. I'm going to leave that one right there, y'all. All right. Once again, hope y'all have a good one. For Derek, you want to say goodbye to the audience? Yeah. Hey, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me, Soli. Appreciate yep. it. It was a good day. And I uh, hope everyone kicks butt today. Let's crank it up. Love you. Bye.